Hi, good evening. Uh, it's me again, Sarah Chiu, talking about our language core, basket starfish. As you can see from the screen, um, that's the look of a basket starfish because I believe all our languages share one single core so no one is above the other. I feel all languages are related, no language is isolated and mm, we are all speaking part of the ancient languages, la ancient language. Okay and um, today I'm going to talk a little bit, uh, continue about the formation of human language. And of course, you know, you will see it from a feminine point of view and someone from the East and also as a traveler's point of view. And I propose an integrated uh, view of looking at languages. Okay, there you go. Okay, uh, good evening. Hi, uh, good evening, nice to see you again. Today is actually my birthday and happy birthday to all of those who have, have their own birthday today, okay? And um, today, as I said, I'm going to talk a little bit about the formation of human uh, concepts. And you will see that I will be talking about it from the real atomic level, the invis indivisible point, you know, that our human understanding of this whole world. And you will see uh, slowly that um, a lot of the uh, logic is already built into our languages. So no wonder why one thing leads na led naturally to the other. So um, I hope you will see my point of view through my slides. And here I am, I'm going to start it now. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, first of all, uh, I repeat the same thing that I believe there is a shared verbal language before um, before writing existed or invented, and because uh, you will see the use of the same sound to express similar meaning across different languages. Uh, uh, families, you know, regardless of time and distance. And I think uh, the way we look at uh, languages now, we are paying too much attention to the grammatical differences and without looking at the real core. Of course, my view is uh, from the East and the West because I'm born from in Asia and then I'm educated, you know, under the Western education system. And then uh, in this uh, research, I think I have ability to read a picture so um, I will use it to interpret writings and sounds, you know, back by my travel experiences instead of solely following the Western standard. So I'm trying to incorporate the Asian uh, view into this. Um, uh, as I said, uh, this week we're going to look at the uh, formation of a human concept from the smallest point. And you will see that it's very interesting that we seem to be building uh, everything really from our uh, uh, foundation, both physically and spiritually. And again, uh, you will see again and again and hear again and again the ubiquitous A-R sound or any of the vowel sounds, A-E-I-O-U, which is the living sound of a human uh, with a soul. And then the K and G sound that uh, lead to mostly all the human concepts already built in our, to our languages. And here I will show you again the ubiquitous symbol in Chinese, this one. And whenever we see it, um, it, it represents the action and energy or simply the existence. You can see all those English words, you know, they are all uh, headed by these vowels too. And uh, when you invert those things, actually it also becomes the A, the alpha in the Western system. As you can see, um, I will point out a few examples right here. Here is uh, the foot itself and, and sometimes it's very interesting that in Chinese visually when we see the bull head itself for us we understand the head as the food why is it because uh, it seems that the ancient already uh, try to figure out what 
uh, promote us forward. It is the inner soul and uh, the appearance of the consciousness that uh, move our physical body. So it is very interesting that the, the bull head gradually linked together with the food. And then um, you can see that again in this thing, it actually stands for the suckling little piglet. And you can see the symbol of life actually uh, stays in there. And even the word alive is actually also again lit by that uh, A symbol and a lot of the uh, verbs also is lit by the A sound too if you pay more attention and this one um, is a, what we call an R what is an R uh, but uh, uh, like a craven or raven or a crow and this is a kind of the bird of prey this is exactly the, like the R sound the ancient Egyptian use uh, also another bird of prey uh, they call the Egyptian vulture as an R sound so you can see the similarity right there and also uh, at times you know we also understand them you know as a real bull itself this is the uh, a real uh, description of the migration of the nomadic people during the Bronze Age. As you can see, a lot of these signs already existed when the when writing system become common and shared between these people. And okay, um, I let you see that uh, the how the ancient look at life itself and this is a picture right here with the uh, Chauvet uh, cave in France you know that it has at least 35,000 years of old years old and then um, you will see that uh, the people seem to be fascinated by all kinds of horned animal this is a board itself but the another thing that we don't pay much attention are the deer because um, other than the bull what we call uh, we think is, is the, the bull bull actually at the very beginning it seems to uh, be uh, representing any horned animal such as the deer itself because in Chinese also in uh, the most ancient or bone scripts um, there were actually a lot of writing uh, um, of the deer itself and uh, here you, you will see uh, these are representation of the animal the first one here is Sumerian Gul. this one is Ka in Egyptian this one is Ao or, or Ga Gu also in Chinese and you can see that these are mainly the sounds that uh, that we call these animals and of course you know even now you know you call all these cattle and then or caribou become a deer and then caribou is a um, south asian buffalo itself and then the filipino will call the carabao calabao and then the capra and also the goat all these are actually the uh, horned animals that uh, for the ancients it represented a lot of energy and in the esoteric field you know the Egyptian will use this car as the symbol of also the soul and then um, this is uh, a symbol the Sumerian used to represent man or the viral energy of man which is the penis itself and also sometimes they use it you know to represent a simple movement and this is a Chinese symbol as I said it whenever we see it it either represent the bull itself or it's also represent unseen energy and movement or even the foot itself and if you turn it around it correspond to the western alpha letter okay and this is back to sumerian this is what they represent the a uh, reed um the simple grass the growing tip they draw the uh, bull horn there and then this is the Chinese word uh, Bali and you have to understand that long before human being uh, domesticated plant all those plants that we eat like barley oats or wheat um, and and uh, were also uh, treated as the wheat and, and, and reed you know so this is also the representation of the growing point and uh, of course you know in the esoteric field it uh, links to the West as the auto, which is the soul and which make us automatic.
uh, which move uh, moves us okay uh, the energy inside us and then the other thing you know you can actually see very clearly the domestication of uh, plant and animal uh, during the invention of uh, long before I should say long before the invention of writing and you can see this also we call it a horn right so uh, uh, the ancient Sumerian has this word uh, for also barley or all, all kinds of uh, 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 wheat, things like uh, food that we, the grains that we eat, and this is also the one of the form of the bull head, and then, and the Chinese also use the same uh, grass like this, uh, a horn grass like this to represent uh, the meaning of life, and this is life, this is life, they both mean means something alive and living. And um, as you can see, the Chinese use this three point and then uh, as animal and this three prong as the plant to both represent a very, very strong power of life. And then this prong actually slowly transfer into real life. This is the ancient um, Egyptians way of representing this car. The car itself is part of the soul and then the car in writing itself and then uh, it actually transcribed into all other kind of forms. This is the uh, god of uh, abundance. And this is in ancient uh, Hebrew writing with the same sound as this. Uh, by this time, it has already acquired the H sound, the He, okay? And then they were actually hoping and praying for blessing. And this is a Chinese He. And this is Chinese He is actually a blessing. As you can see, all those prawns are very, very important. Even up to this stage, you know, the priests of all religion are still doing, um, using their body to make this three prawn to um, kind of uh, connecting to the sky for for blessings. And of course, you know, in the other uh, rim, you know, people will be wearing all kinds of bull horn in order to get this power of the bull itself and and I will let you see the how a human being used to uh, follow the power of horn and literally uh, borrowing it into their body and these are all the ancient um, Sumerian, Hittite and, and, and uh, until the Greek or even the Vikings you know and um, they were all wearing this bull horn to incorporate those power into their own body of course at the beginning they were just gods and then uh, become represented of human being in order to borrow the power the power of God but at the beginning you can see very clearly that uh, female goddesses and, and and male God also wear the same thing but as time went by in the West you know only the uh, men or only the men wear those horns but if you um, look at the writing itself and then um, the horn it, of a cow, this is actually representation of a cow, but the sound actually remains. It's called af, you know. In Chinese, the the uh, the bull, the cow, the cattle, they are all summed up and called ngao in a way. Okay, other than the gu, they are also called ngao. And um, but you can see that the female cow is actually stripped of their horn right there, and then this is the Chinese horn, and then this is the Chinese word that represent the movement the food itself but uh, interestingly uh, this agent of movement with this conscious that push it forward still retain part of the sound as ah okay and then um, you will see that in Chinese actually re retain this power in females if you go and look at all this in ancient times you know all these young girls are are located to this kind of hairstyles and as you uh, change your age uh, when you grow up you can no longer wear like this and all this you know power right there only belong to the young girls because they have they hold all the potential of growth and also they hold all the potential of giving birth okay and then um, to this week I'm not going to distract you but I can show you next week a lot of this R sound representing by this um, R shape. Actually, this is how we write this R right there. Can you see that we actually write down the shape of that? For us, it means any fork-like, you know, in other words, it's horn-like um, things.
okay so uh, now we look at a little bit uh, how the concept grows and uh, it, you have to uh, prepare yourself you know to understand the how the ancient uh, understand a little spark of energy through that uh, little uh, plant right there with the growth tip they have a reading for it as as uh, Gi or Ji, I'm, I'm not sure how they would uh, pronounce it in the ancient time, but uh, we know that is is this ladder right there. And in, uh, other than the reed itself, it also means the essence and the gist itself or uh, well uh, sorry i'm pronouncing it in the german way in english you pronounce it as gist okay the the essence of anything it's that little bull head right there and then um this is the sumerian word for life and living and you see the bull head this is the uh car in Egyptian this is also the car in Egyptian by this time you can see it very clearly that um, the patriarchal world has already taken over so a lot of them you know instead of incorporating the female uh, side most of the are, are taken up by the male uh, symbols okay and this is the linear B uh, the proto-greek before the Greek were in that area the proto-greek were there and this is a car sign and for Following that, the Greek has the kafali, the head, and then or the kadia, the, the 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 heart. Okay, and interestingly, the Chinese actually have a similar symbol. We say it as gap. You say gap and gap. Okay, and then uh, we actually both means the first and the head. Okay. And then uh, in ancient Sumerian, you have a similar symbol. Actually, it means the heart. You have to understand the head and the heart, where your soul or your conscious stays, you know, is still um, uh, being uh, argued, you know, in our human world right now, you know, the head or the heart, okay? And then um, there is another zoom, uh, linear B sign. This is Ko, this is Ka. Look at this. I want to show you pairing of these languages. This is Egyptian. These two are the um, uh, uh, proto-Greek linear B. And I want you, you to see the how we used to write heart in ancient China. Okay, This is uh, one of the uh, bronze script. And then it mutated like this gradually it actually very interestingly it actually mutated something like a form like this into a head you know so um, this is how we roll the heart but if you pay attention this is the group of the Egyptian this is the group in Chinese this is the group in uh, linear B. Can you see that they are all very, very close to each other when they were talking about the heart and the head, where your conscious are, okay? And then, of course, the core is the Latin word for the heart, which become the English word core. And then this car itself is actually an Indian uh, script, uh, Gujarat. And in Gujarat, if you say Kilaka, is actually the exo itself. You see the exo, the moving part, is still lead by the uh, bull head itself. And then you have this very, very typical Phoenician sign. You can still actually see in the flag of Sicily in Italy. Can you see the uh, heart and the head and the foot is always there. It is uh, the head that push the foot forward. And then um, this is back to Sumerian. You will see the sound stays again. It actually means turn and to manifest something into into real life. And then um, the kin and the kin. Kinesis, uh, the first motion of the cosmos, I guess. And this is actually the kin in Chinese. When I say kinesis, this is this came from a Greek word, okay? But kin actually is Chinese, saying the male element that pushed the the function of the cosmos. And then this is the ancient uh, Sumerian symbol for man and also the penis. And then this is the Chinese word for the foot. Can you see clearly the conscious head is actually stuck to it? And then this is a 
ba Babylonian symbol. Look at the, how identical they were. And then it actually mutated into a cuneiform writing like this. You can still see the blue head, the, the bull head. And then it has the gash sound. And then uh, it actually means the foot, the man, and the penis. And you will see the, uh, the Chinese, uh, actually, other than the car and the R sound, you will see later, it maintains this G, girl, girl, okay? And then this is a later writing, but I want you to concentrate on the earlier writing. And then um, this is gay in Chinese, the footstool, or also means the foot, you know, but of a dead object. And this gum itself is Sanskrit, also totally related to the movement of the foot. And then also where you sit, okay? And there's the foot, the base, and the home, and men. And then it goes uh, back to ancient Hebrew. This is ancient Hebrew gum. It's also closely related to the foot. Look at all this. Foot, 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 okay? And then you come down to actually uh, the source and the origin. Why is that? Because it goes back to the very, very origin of where uh, your movement actually started. But what moved your uh, body, it is that little conscious that was represented. And when you look at this, you know, by this time, you know, it was already taken over by the um, patriarchal world. And um, actually, when you look at this, it actually means the car right there in the in the in the ancient hieroglyph, and um, it actually means the male part, you know. And then uh, because of this sperm, and which is the essence, the gist that creates life, and and that pulls it forward to back to this symbol. And what I'm showing you here is actually very interesting. This is the word thought and thinking in Chinese. Can you see the thought right there? The head and that very symbol right there. It means the thought and the consciousness. And then of course it means the desire. This desire in different way. Of course this is a desire and also a desire to achieve anything. It is this little desire that push us forward. And and back to Chinese right there, this is the, uh, when we see this head, it actually for us, it means the foot movement. And then, um, can you see that it's uh, represented there in another Chinese sign? And it's very clear in another Phoenician symbol, the head and the foot. And then um, it goes back to the growth vigor because this little uh, growth power actually push for all kinds of growth. And as I said, you know, uh, the little pig right here actually represented the growth vigor. And then uh, the eighth symbol right there is still there. And then the Chinese, as time uh, went by, we also used this grass back to the original. We use this to represent life and anything alive. And then you can come back, as I said, back to this little bull head right there. And then interestingly, this bull head is still maintained this R sound in a lot of different cultures. Okay. Okay. So um, here I want to show you a little bit of the remnants of ancient words. And these are all the symbols I want you to see. And this, the foot, the penis, everything to do with the bull. This is Chinese right there. And in Chinese, we have uh, two words right there. It's, we sound this as ao or gao, okay? So normally, I don't use the gao to mean bad things. You know, when I use the gao, I actually mean just a hook, okay? And then, but the ao and the gao actually means a strong bull itself. But if you look at this hidden part right there, if you look into the dictionary, it actually actually means the female part and the male part. Very strange. And then um, in uh, the dictionary, it still means the hook, the bend, and to entice something. It also, uh, in vulgar language, it means the penis. This never goes into the dictionary. It just goes on the street, you know, from for thousands of years, it still survives on the street. And in, in the dictionary, you can only see the strong bull, okay? And this viral energy actually stays very clear in the um, Egyptian pictograph. And then uh, you see this, this 
ancient Hebrew become like this is really like a hook right there okay and then it become the gimel the gimel actually if you ask a, 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 a Jewish people they will always tell you for some reason the food is also a pun for the penis itself the private part and this is because the ancient uh, thing is already built in right there and then this gum actually become the Greek gamma and then the gamma become the the foot calf itself. Uh, have you ever asked yourself why the foot become the calf? What's it to do with the the calf, the real calf itself? Because the two were actually punning each other since ancient time. Last week I already showed you how this gamba, the calf the, of the foot in uh, Greek, become the gamba in Italian and zamba in Italian, and then become the the jam in French and become the hamon, the ham, which is the pig's uh, leg you know in in Spanish so these are the mutation in writing so but then you have a very interesting word in gamisu gamisu actually in Greek means this word uh, the F U C K word and look at this all this this is the ancient remnant and you can see that the ancient remnant is still in Greek in Chinese and also in Hebrew. So all this, you know, don't look down on vulgar words because a lot of them were actually ancient remnants. And then I want you to see how can we can understand the connection of this whole world. Uh, you can understand the cow as the cosmos. Uh, that is long before the patriarchal society took over and the galaxy actually comes it as the Milky Way. Why? If you look at this ancient uh, image of the uh, cow itself, how the Egyptian understood the world, that is the line of star, actually the part where the milk was made, okay? And then the what, why is the galaxy right there? The Sumerian has the word ga, that's actually they understood as a milk bottle or milk jug. The Chinese has, a, a, in archaeology, we have a jug we no longer use. It's called ga or lake, you know, this no longer used in daily life. And uh, look at this, it means tripod. And it actually, one of the sound actually goes into Latin, the lak and the lay, cafe or lay, okay? And then in Chinese, it continued to mutate as nai. And then the milk and the breast, and this will be the real shape. Okay, I think um, this week I'm going to stop here because time is running out. Thank you for watching. Bye.